All right, what's going on, everybody? Broken Games HDR. Second video of the day, going to be reviewing uh, Gamescom 2023 opening night live with uh, good old Jeff Keighley. Somebody ran up on Jeff Keighley again. Um, Jeff Keighley, you're going to have to get some shooters around you. Like, real talk. Like, these, these dudes do not respect, bro. Like, this shit is crazy how they try this, like, every year. Like, it's you're just becoming, they think you a mark, dog. You got to get some snipers and shooters around you. Like, some, some really, you got to get some ex-military dudes, some, you know, former Navy SEALs, some, like, former NFL linebackers, bodyguards, some, some dudes that keep that thing on. Because, like, dog, I know you tired of getting tried. I know you tired of getting, getting tried, bro. I'm, I'm sorry. You, like, and Jeff Keeley, you got it. You, you got it. You, we know you got the money to, you know, put them dudes around you. So I don't know why you haven't done that yet. Because if it was me, oh, yeah. This year would be the last time any of these dudes tried me at my show. At anything I'm posting, oh, yeah. Next, next time one of y'all try that, I'm making an example out of y'all. One of y'all is getting tackled by a 300-pound pro or you getting sniped by, like, some expert-level, like, marksman. I'm sorry, because y'all y'all not going to keep doing this to me. You're not going to keep doing this to me. That, that's just me, though, if I had money, you know, and, and if I was in, in his position. So I just wanted to put that out there because they, they just out here disrespecting my guy. Like, where's Kojima when you need him? Kojima should be protecting him. Um, Anyway, that's not about that. So let's talk about Gamescom opening night live. You know what I've realized? I, I'm, I'm a, I've been this way for a long time. I'm, I've become it even more. I'm really like a skeptic. Let me switch to my, switch to the screen. I'm, I'm more of a cynic and a skeptic than ever before when it comes to like game trailers. Like I hate the art or the disrespect of the art of game trailers for a long time now. I believe it's a craft that should be respected a little bit more. And I'm not like Jack, Jack move, right? Jack move, when it comes to like current gaming, Jack is like just an all around negative guy and a pessimist. I'm not that. I'm just like skeptical and cynical about what I'm seeing, if it's real and if it's true. And that's kind of like my attitude when I see game trailers. I'm just like, I, I'm just like, uh, I don't know if I believe what I see is real. I don't know if the game, what we're seeing in this trailer is actually going to be accurate to what we get. Um, that's kind of how my attitude is, right? You know, some things are just too good to be true. I think some things, a lot of these game trailers are more like marketing tools to get developers to come help them work on the game. But a lot of the things that they showed in that trailer is not actually going to make it in the game. All right, so I'm actually going to switch to IGNs. I had Euro gamers list open, but I'm just going to go off of uh, uh, IGNs. So IGN's, once again, I don't know which one is in chronological order, but IGN first talks about this Starfield live action trailer. The live action trailer looks, looks cool. I have no interest in Starfield whatsoever. I'm never going to play the game. Um, not my type of game. I've never liked Bethesda, you know, uh, Bethesda's games, um, Elder Scroll, Fallout. I've never liked those games. You know, I've, I like the other games under the Zenimax umbrella, but not games that Bethesda um, directly make. So, uh, I, you know, my, my Metacritic pred prediction for Starfield is like 87, 88. Um, I don't think, once again, I do not think it's going to be this mind-bending, this revolutionary uh, game that changes the gaming landscape forever. And it's going to be something we've never seen before. It's going to blow our pockets out of our pants. and sh But I don't think that about any game ever right that's that's not my attitude and my outlook when it comes to you've never heard me say oh I, oh this game is going to revolutionize game i never think that about any game it, i think it's weird that so many gamers think that so often about games i'm like are y'all sick in the head why do y'all think like every game if, oh cyberpunk is gonna change gaming forever then this game is gonna change gaming forever it's gonna be revolutionary starfield's gonna be rip Y'all think every goddamn thing is going to be revolutionary, and it never is. It'd be the games that y'all don't hype up that end up doing it. So, um, yeah, I just think it's going to be, I don't think it's definitely not going to be trash. It's not going to be like some disaster. It's, it's, I think it's just going to be a, a good, a good game. Um, that's it. But, you know, I have no interest in it.
Okay, so next, uh, Zack Snyder reveals Rebel Moon's uh, explosive first trailer. This is a movie, wasn't it? Uh, features Anthony Hopkins narrated look at the Netflix movie in action. Trailer filled with space travel guns. Yeah, I'm not, I'm sorry. I'm here for the games. Not that I won't end up like possibly, possibly watching that movie, but um, I'm here to talk about games right now. Uh, not to review movies. Um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 gameplay trailer shows off the first level. This looks good. Um, I'm I'm a fan of Call of Duty campaigns. I've I, I've said that forever, right? I I play every single campaign. I beat every single campaign except Ghost. Ghost is the only one, and it kind of bothers me that I Ghost is that, that that's the only one in the entire series that I never beat. I started it, but it was just. It was boring. Like, that's the only Call of Duty campaign I ever played where I was like, yo, I'm falling asleep, which is crazy. Like, like how do you how do you bore me out of a Call of Duty campaign, which are like just wild shooting Michael Bay type movie almost? Um, but, yeah, I always play the, the campaigns. I, I really like them. I just never touch the multiplayer because, as I've been saying since I've been on here, Call of Duty multiplayer, absolute garbage. Uh, Alan Wake 2, uh, this was like a live action trailer mixed with some gameplay. Looks good. Alan Wake 2 is a day one for me. Um, I'm going to also do, I'm going to do a playthrough of that, live playthrough uh, of that when it comes out. Look forward to it. Um, Diablo Season 4, uh, excuse me, Diablo 4 Season 2, um, called, it's called Season of Blood, at Vampire and Hunter Companion. I don't play Diablo, not because I don't think I would like Diablo. Games like Diablo and Baldur's Gate require like do require you to dedicate an amount of time that I just do not have, right? That's the honest reason I won't play like games like that because like I I, I feel like for games like Baldur's Gate it doesn't make any sense to sit down and play it for an hour. You're not going to get anything done, you're not going to accomplish anything, you're not going to make a dent in the game. That's a game I would play if I had literally um, just a whole day to myself, you know, uh, days, not even one day, uh, days to myself to make a, a real dent into it, to really uh, get acclimated into it. And um, I had nothing else to do, no other games to, to, to really play, just like a, a real gap in, the, in, the, in, the, in gaming, right, where, where there's no other, nothing else, right, just a dry season. That's the only time I would play these type of games. So um, that's the only, yeah, because just don't got the time to dedicate to that, man. I don't. That's why, like, my preference is really, like, 30-hour games. That's, to me, that's, and, and of course, that does vary depending on the genre. But even RPGs, I would probably say, like, yo, 50, 60 hours. But outside of that, generally, keep my games 25 to 30 hours. Ain't nobody got time to be... You know, in my college days, and some of y'all been watching me since my, since my college days, in my college days, I would turn on the Baldur's Gate. Now, absolutely not. I don't got no time. Uh, Mortal Kombat 1 looks amazing. Um, not a game I'm going to be playing, but I'm a fan of watching, the, uh, watching others play it in the FGC and watching other uh, talented um, and top-tier players um, play it. And, and the, the character reveals and ha have just been absolutely am amazing in, in this it, it, the whole time since since uh you know they announced announced the game it's just been amazing assassin's creed mirage this is another day one for me i've hated the last three assassin's creed games i've hated all the assassin's creed games since they converted the game into an rpg as soon as the first time we learned that that assassin's creed mirage was going back to its roots to a smaller tighter experience removing all the bloat it's going to be like a 20-hour game. I was like, sign me up. That's a day one. I already got it pre-ordered. I just hope they, after Mirage, they don't abandon, um, you know, these smaller games and experiences for the 100-hour piece of shit that people, for some reason, buy. Um, I, I hope they just do both, right? Listen, I don't mind if you do both. Have your 100-hour game with, with unnecessary bloat. But give me your give me the 20 hour experience experience also. Right. So we can have the best of both worlds. People can choose what they want. So, yeah, and that that trailer looks good. Um, Cyberpunk 2077. I don't give a damn about Cyberpunk. Remember, remember when it was BG against the world 
uh, with Cyberpunk when I, when I was on an island alone telling people Cyberpunk was going to be a disaster. And then and everybody was like trying to just shit on me and I ended up being right about it. Okay, yeah, let's move on. Um, Pepperidge Farm remembers, I remember. Sonic Superstars has a release date, which is October 7th. What the fuck is with all these games in October? October is so damn stacked, and this is, a, this is an amazing year for gaming. Um, of course, I'm not playing no Sonic game. Like, what do I look like? Uh, Sonic Frontiers, this is the Netflix show, right? No, I'm bugging. Sonic, Fr Sonic Frontiers is the, the game. Um, yeah, that, the game that came out. When did, when did it come out? Last year? That was last year when it came out, right? Years have started to blend together. So what is this? DLC, a free update called The Final Horizon later this year will add story, new playable characters, and challenge. Okay, cool for all the, uh, all the Sonic fans that sit, sit in the, uh, you know, that ride the short bus and sit in the back of the class. Shout out to y'all. Quantic Dream announces Dustborn. Don't care. Uh, thank goodness your hair is a new game by studio behind Untitled Goose Game. Definitely don't care. Little Nightmares 3 announced with a trailer about spooky co-op. So, okay, I've, Little Nightmares has always looked cool. Um, I've never gotten into it, though. Black Myth Wukong, definitely one of those games um, that I was talking about originally where just don't believe it until it's in my hands, right? I think that's, that's just safe. That's just being cautious. What they showed in this trailer, though, was a lot more believable and a little bit, and I would say, noticeably more grounded and practical than what we saw in that original trailer. In that original trailer, dude was just doing like whatever the hell he wants, right? It was like that original trailer was damn near like Bugs Bunny and like an episode of Looney Tunes. Dude just like make it, just do it literally. He has the power of if he can think it, he can do it. And I know like that's technically like. If, if you go back to like the, the, the source material of what, uh, of what the character is capable of doing, that's, that kind of is what his power is, literally, like kind of unlimited power. But in a game setting, you have to have limitations. So that's why I was very skeptical about what we were seeing, because I, I, I still believe what we saw originally is not going to be um, what we get. Because even this gameplay trailer, even though it looked great, it, it's, it feels, it seems and looks much more Sekiro to me now and a little bit more grounded and uh, a little bit more contained, right? So it, it, it looks good, though. I look forward to this game. It's coming out 2024, they claim. So cool. Um, Marvel Snap, definitely don't care. Uh, Medieval Fighter Warhaven, I actually don't think I've seen this trailer. Uh, Warhaven features 16 versus 16 multiplayer battles. Um, yeah, no, nah, I doubt I'm, I doubt I'm be interested in, in what this, there's so many like medieval PVP games and I don't think they're, I don't, I personally don't think they're very good. Moving on. Grand Blue Fantasy coming out February. Wait, what? Side Games shared a new trailer for Grand Blue Fantasy Relink a, and revealed the action RPG will be released on February 1st, 2023. Uh, I think that's a typo there, brother. Um, IGN, you might want to get one of your editors to, uh, you know, fix that. Y'all have a little bit of a oversight. I was like, 2023? I, mean, I was like, you mean six months ago, dog? So they must mean 2024, obviously. Um. So it's been delayed. I don't remember what the original release date was. And uh, this, I'll probably never get, I'll, it's probably not, not a game I'm ever going to play. Nightingale, uh, some game that's going to be released early access, something I'm probably never going to play. Uh, Victorian gas lamp fantasy themed survival crafting game. Nah, yeah, I'm definitely never going to play that. Mudrunner is a driving sim game where you go where you go off road to your heart's content. Yeah, as soon as you said driving sim, even though it's off road, still never gonna play it. The only way I'm playing a driving game is if it has guns on it, um, missiles, oil slicks, something, cart racing, Stormgate. Yeah, don't care. Some behind the scenes shit. Don't care about Crimson De uh, Crimson Desert. So this is another game that uh, we've gotten. I think we've gotten a few trailers for this, right? That I'm 
also very skeptical and cynical about this game. Like technically, mechanically, it looks impressive from the trailer I saw, but no, um, I'm probably never going to play. I'm just being real. I'm just being real. Like, like we know as gamers, we have a very limited amount of time and there's a we have to be very selective about the games we play. So I acknowledge I'm probably I, I know what I'm actually going to get to. And even the games that are impressed that look impressive that I'm probably never going to play or never going to get into. I, I, I just know. So I'm probably never going to play this. Um, Bullet Storm VR. That's a day one. I already pre-ordered it. Going to be playing that. Looks great. Um, Assassin's, Assassin's Creed. Excuse me. Age of Empires 4. Uh, it's coming to Xbox. Listen, I still question how people play strategy games like this on consoles. On a controller specifically. I, I'm still... Can you just connect? You can't just connect any keyboard to consoles. Um, so. People playing game like, you know, RTS or strategy games with controllers. I think you're I, I think y'all are like insane. I think y'all like a little bit clinically insane because you're you're like you're only doing yourself a disservice, in my opinion, rather than just playing it on a PC with mouse and keyboard. But listen, have at it. Um, I think anybody who really cares about this game will play it on PC and has played it on PC. Killing Floor. I played I played Killing Floor 2, but it's not a series that I that I care about. Armored Core 6 comes out in two days. Yep, two days. And I will actually be doing a live stream of this. Yep, I'm I'm gonna be doing a live stream playthrough. Uh so hopefully, hopefully that goes that goes well. Um I look forward to that. Um game looks looks fun. You know, I was I wasn't impressed by like the what was it? The first the, the reveal. I wasn't impressed by that and then even the second trailer, but after that when they started showing more, I was like, "Okay, I'm I'm going to play this." The last last epoch um yeah, I I, I didn't care. The Crew Motorfest. Ubisoft continues to impress me with how they're able to just continue to make games that that I know nobody even plays. Like isn't this like the fourth Crew game? It's like I know nobody who plays these games, but if they keep making them, Ubisoft either just, either just has like plenty of money to keep making games nobody wants, or people a lot of people are playing those games, and I'm just ignorant about it. It it's possible. Um, Fort Solace or Solace. Uh, this game, every trailer for this game that that I saw prior to launch looks like absolute dog shit. Every trailer has just been the main character running and walking. I kid you not. And I'm like, what? There's literally, bro, there's literally a trailer. It was the one before this trailer. Dude is just walking and running. Nothing even happens. I'm like, what is this game about? Just a dude in space that it, it, it's supposed to be some like suspense thriller, I guess, but it looks trash. It's, and I think it's like a, like a 50, 60s on Metacritic. It's garbage. Some trash space walking simulator. Lords of the Fallen, that's also a day one. Y'all know I love my Souls games. Nothing more to say about it. That's, that's a day one. Um, Genshin Impact, don't care. Honkai Star Rail, don't care. Not into these games. Zenless Zone Zero, like, like the name. Like the, you know, pretty, I like the name, but that's it. Don't care. Payday 3, don't care about Payday. Delta Force. So, still skeptical, very cynical. The trailer looked good from what they showed. But these type of games are not easy to pull off. They're trying to like, I feel like they're trying to take the space um, that has been created by the vacuum of uh, Battlefield being absolute garbage. Even though, yes, it's been improved since, vastly improved since launch, but still. Um, and Delta Force has, I played Delta Force back in the day, and it's been dormant for a very long time. But I have no faith in this developer. Uh, so even though they made the trailer look good, making you know it could be like i said i'm skeptical because stuff like that could be very deceiving nowadays so i'm just not gonna believe my eyes and it's pre-alpha footage yeah you're not fooling me um homeworld 3 don't care uh mandragora um i think i like the art style of that when i watched the trailer for it um gotta see more Warhammer, don't care. Era History Untold, don't care. And that was it, I think. Um, Homeworld 3, did I mention that from IGN? I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, don't care. Um, 
Yeah, that's the guy. Under the waves? Yeah, don't care. I think I covered everything. Yeah, uh, let me know what y'all think. Let me know if there's any game that, you know, you saw from here that really excited you that you look forward to. Other than that, I'm out. Hit the like button. Hit the notification bell. Follow me on Twitter. All that good stuff. Um, I'll catch y'all on the next video. Peace.